episode 55, something from everyone with Ashanti. I should have asked you how to say your last name before I started this, but I'm going to take a stab at it. You'll correct me if I'm wrong. So I think it's Ashanti Dor, Dor, Dwar, Dower. 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 It feels like the A and the U are both in the wrong place. Like as I was spelling it, I kept misspelling <laughs> it and being like, no, both of these look wrong. You're not me. the first person to say that. <laughs> I've gotten D-U-A-R. I've gotten Dor. I've gotten Duar. Yep. I've gotten all of the mispronunciations that you can possibly You're talking to someone with a last name <laughs> prone for mispronunciations. Yes. yes. Jones Tor Gross is something people look at. And I think it's like. It sounds the way it's spelled, but I think people just see it and go, I'm good. I don't need to like, yeah, try that. No, yeah. yeah. Honestly, I get it. But you I only agree. have four letters. So I, I feel like it's like, letters, how hard? Yeah. Be brave, brother. Take a shot. No, <laughs> even if you're wrong. wrong, it'll be fine. Yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I've gotten but... Tortuga was my favorite one in high school. Someone said Peter Jones Tortuga. Yeah. And I was like, that's close enough. That's something. There's it is what it is. something happening in there. Um, yeah. Episode 55. I appreciate you making the trip here. Uh, yeah, I'd like to start off with like any quick plug stuff. Uh, so for me, it's out of music videos coming up. And that, yeah, leave a like on the show. It helps out. Is there anything, uh, people, social media, any photos, things you want to advertise? Like what is something people normally book with you? Where should people reach out if they're interested in booking photos with you? Um, yes, where do people find you? Yeah, so usually I'm mostly on Instagram, Hello. at Ashanti Dower. So just the first name, last name. Um, usually... I'm only doing mostly like show work right now, so mostly Perfect. concerts, um, live photos. Um, I have been doing portraits on the side, not too much, but mostly photo, uh, like fo uh, show photos. That's like what I'm mostly doing right now. That's um, the goal. Yeah, it is the goal, you know, outside of everything else I'm doing, but that's mostly my focus right now. Oh, and yeah. I'm extending it out to video work slowly. We're getting <laughs> there. We are, yes. <laughs> We're getting there. Uh, you mentioned the portraits. That is a perfect place to dive in. Okay. As I as I was prepping for the show, I scrolled through everyone's Instagram and mm -hmm. Facebook, and it seemed like your Instagram kind of starts with portraits. Yeah. Uh, is portraits kind of like your way into getting a camera? Like, where does this, like, photo journey start for you? What's, like, the first thing? Are you, yeah, in middle school taking uh, pictures of trees? Like, where does this thing start for you? <laughs> started way before middle school. So. Hell yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, really young, I started with, the, you know, those little basic digital cameras. Oh, yeah. Like the little, you know, um, started with that. And with these family ones that you, like, stole from yeah, mom? Yeah, like, yeah. Literally from mom. Yeah, stole that, yeah. that camera from her, and I remember... If I could bring it back to an age, I was probably like eight or nine when it started. Good for um, you. And yeah. And so <laughs> I took a trip to Ecuador because that's where my family's from. And that's when I, I think that's when I mainly started to take photos was kind of like on trips and stuff. And then when I was back home, I was just like taking photos of random things. Um, it could be like my backyard, my tree, yep. my front yard. I literally have a photo of like my plants in my front yard. <laughs> and so... Um, and then, you know, as I got into like middle school, <laughs> that, that's when I started to be like, yeah, I think I want my own camera. Yep. Um, and so I went, I got a camera. It was like a Nikon cool pick something. It was like something really like, you know, <laughs> a million started. dollar camera. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I started with that and I started to just take photos of friends. I was just like, Hey guys, like, can I just practice on you? So that's what, that's yep. where the portrait started. Um, However, I didn't create an Instagram until years later. So whatever is there is like what I started to like. That was my that's when I started to actually like be like, okay, I can start an Instagram. <laughs> um, but it started, yeah, it started with friends and stuff. And then, but it wasn't serious. Yeah. So I started taking it seriously with like music stuff. It's about to be seven years. So oh, yeah. like June of like, what is it? 20, like. <laughs> 2020. Just whatever. Still 2019. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah still. <laughs> Um, and so, you know, seven, it's about to be seven years. So uh, essentially started with Lucas, everybody. Mm -hmm. We all know Lucas. Yes, um, shout out Lucas. <laughs> uh, he's been on here a bunch of times. I don't know episode numbers, but yeah, one not too long ago and then one a little bit longer ago. Yeah, yeah. so it started with him. We've known each other for like forever. Like we went to middle school together. So, Did you? Okay. Yeah, we, we live in the same town, so, you know. Small um, world. And, yeah. <laughs> and so uh, we met, we became really great friends, and then he had already started his project like with As Within. And so... I was just starting photo and I had mentioned like that I really wanted to get into like music photography and he was just like, well, we're playing our first show this day. Come shoot. And I was like, okay. So we essentially started at the same time. So he started playing shows and then I started my photo stuff like literally that at the same goals. time. That is yeah. an incredible <laughs> journey. Yeah. So, uh, you know. I'm laughing then, that my, I, as you were telling that story, I realized that my photo journey also starts with a family trip to Ecuador. Oh, uh, so <laughs> my mom is from Chile uh, okay. and one of her siblings moved to Ecuador. And uh -huh. so when we were going to visit them, I got myself a camera like kind of as like a Christmas present kind okay. of thing. Yeah. Uh, and so I I guess, yeah, the general story here is that I'm in college and I am not loving it. And so like uh, in the middle of one year, I take a semester off to kind of see what else is happening. And mm -hmm. one of those things I tried is the camera. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I take the semester off and it's like 
yeah, I go to the first season. So I'm in school for the fall and the spring is when I'm off. So I get a camera and try it right then. We're also flying down to, uh, yeah, see family in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. So I bring the camera just like thinking it's family stuff. Like yeah. what a good time to try and have a camera and see what happens. Right. Uh, and I remember, yeah, taking photos at a family gathering that I had completely forgotten about until right now. And <laughs> you're saying, and that is technically my first photo shoot is this family gathering. And I remember being so like uncomfortable walking around with my camera yeah. of like, I had this toy and I felt like everyone looked at me as like, oh, you're the camera guy now. And I was like, no, I'm a guy and someone put a camera in my hands and I don't know exactly how this yeah. got here. Uh, it sounds like if you started with your camera at eight or nine, though, then maybe you were in before that like self-conscious voice got going. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it was just something that I it was fun. It was yeah. just like, well, I'm just here to take photos and everybody yep. be like, oh, like take a photo of us. I'm like, OK, <laughs> like and I'll just be like, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then slowly, though, I started to get weird about it. I'm, mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, like everybody thinks I'm like going to take photos at it like yes. now. And I literally like a couple of years ago, I have a photo of myself where I was just kind of like, and I think the caption was like that moment when your family like literally just wants you to take photos at family yep. gatherings. <laughs> and that sort of became a thing on its own. Um, but before that, it was just like a fun thing. For I me. very yeah. quickly learned that I want to be on the fly on the wall with my camera. And at yeah. a concert, I can be. At a concert, no one gives a fuck who I am. They're yeah. just happy to let the camera float around. Exactly. At a family gathering, there's no flies on the wall, no. especially not when you're part of the family. Like exactly. it was this weird thing of, yeah, I can't be social and do this art at the same time. Yeah. And so I felt like yeah. I had to like dip of like, okay, I'm going to leave the party for half an hour mm -hmm. mentally and just walk yeah. around and take photos and then mm -hmm. come back to the gathering. Mm -hmm. But it was this weird balance of like, yeah, getting used to having this camera in my hand and like, mm -hmm. I don't know, that, that physical sensation is always a weird one. I've been learning drums. They're high yeah. my favorite little toy. Yeah. Um, but it's been a similar thing of like sitting at the drum kit is so uncomfortable and foreign that it takes me back to that first day of holding a camera and yeah. being like, what the fuck? How do people use this? Why is this in my hands? Why am I here? Yeah, yeah. So when I got my first camera, I was just like, Looking at it, like, how am I supposed to yeah, use so this? Many okay. buttons here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I was just like, oh, geez, like, okay. So I sat there just watching hours of videos, like mm -hmm. YouTube videos. And I mean, I'm sure everybody has done yes. this, but it's like, you know, I sat there for hours learning it. Um, eventually got Lightroom, you know, all of these other things. But I mean, yeah, it's been. It was a confusing time yes. <laughs> when I first started. And I'm glad you mentioned that you started the Instagram late because the other thing I was, <gasps> I, was, I was scrolling back, I looked at your first photos. And I was yeah. like, oh, these feel like not beginner photos. So either you were <laughs> way ahead of the curve when you started or there's some trickery happening. This isn't actually day one. I was not ahead of the <laughs> curve when I started. Um, no, I didn't start an Instagram until I felt confident. And I'm like, OK, mm. I can start posting this these like photos and not feel completely like, yeah. wow, I hate these. <laughs> Um, you know, I mean, looking back at them now, I'm like, well, I hate them, but they're not the worst in the world. You mm -hmm. know, they're fine for what they are. And so it kind of just, it migrated though. So if portraits and then it started to just become like, if you look at my Instagram now, so it just all shows. That's like all I do now. That's and the move, yeah. I love it so much more than portrait work. I Why? mean, honestly, like I love portrait work, but only when it comes to doing like band promos like working and like with a group of people and it's just because it's a different type of energy I mm -hmm. really like that when I work with like you know portraits and stuff um a lot of people have this idea that it has to look a certain way like you know people who don't really know about photos it, it's it's like the creative freedom I think it's like with promos doing show photos I get that creative complete creative freedom with like portraits of like people who don't know too much they're like oh I want it to look like this and I'm like okay <laughs> like we yep. can do that I think it's just like when they're like, yeah, do whatever you want. I'm like, great. And I think I, I experienced that more with like show work and promos are kind of like, you know, do whatever you think looks good. And I'm like, yep. I will. <laughs> I agree 100%. You know? Yeah, with a band, yeah. it's like I can tell you this looks cool. I think mm -hmm. with portraits where I always get stuck because it's like it's about making that subject feel beautiful. Exactly. And exactly. what they think of as beautiful is wildly subjective and probably not really in touch with what everyone else likes about them, exactly. right? Like whatever they think looks it's their best. It's way is, more personal. Yeah. Um, and I always get scared about yep, that. I get same. very intimidated. I get very anxious. Yep. And I always like let them know. I'm like, when you look at these, please let me know if you want me to change anything. I will happily do that, yep. you know, and I'll always revise it. I'll work with them, make sure they're happy with them. Um, but it's just that like anxiety. I'm like looking over them. I'm like, I think this look good. Like yep. these look good. But like, what if I give it to them and they're like, well, you know, it's like that like feeling. It's like with other things, it's like you get, com it's like experimental. You can kind of do whatever you, know, you want. You could add all these like abstract things to it. And they're like, great, this looks cool. You yes. know, I think with portrait work, it's, um, I feel like if for me personally, it's like a little risky. I, yes. I, that's why I'm like kind of, I kind of pull back from it. 
I still love doing it, but it's just like kind of like don't yeah. lean into that if I had a choice. <laughs> I also with portraits, I would get stuck on like how much retouching to do. Like, yeah. I don't want to delete the birth effect, that birth defect, like the mole on your face, the, the pimple scar, right. whatever the thing is. It's right. like, I don't want to delete the one that makes you you. Like there exactly. are some of our friends who have like a facial mole. And it's like, that's part of their identity. Like, that's a thing right. that they like or it's something they're used to. But it, if it's an imperfection, I don't want to send you a photo and force you to be like, hey, could you like touch up my cheeks a oh little God, bit? No, I know. Like, there's there's been, that really fine there's line There's been there. those situations where like I kind of refuse to do any retouching because yeah. like it's like, I don't know. I don't want to make you think like, oh, she removed that mm -hmm. because like she thinks this. Like, no, yes, not at all. Um, and that's another thing. That's kind of why I also lean back from it. But there's been situations where like we've been at a shoot and they're like, hey, do you mind removing this? I'm like, yeah, like I'll mm -hmm. do that for you. But I just don't want to like take that initiative of like removing that and then making them feel a certain way. You yes. know, it's like that kind of there's a border there and like yeah. a, there's a boundary essentially. And it's like I never want to cross that and then, you know, have it become like an issue with, between me and whoever I'm working with. I recently had a, a client that I work with many times and I work with him. Uh, he's a grown man. I've worked with him in a lot of different mm -hmm. business contexts and a lot of different projects he's involved with. Mm -hmm. Uh, his daughter was graduating high school, and so yeah. they wanted, like, senior portraits for her. Yeah. And that was one where I was, like, going through, and it's like, she's a high schooler, right? There's going to be a couple of pimples. There's going to be a little yeah. odds and ends. There's still a, a young woman. But it was like, fuck, this is a real fragile ego. Like, when I'm working with a band, it's like, I'm taking a 30-year-old guy who's kind of miserable already and probably kind of grumpy. Like, it's pretty exactly. hard to ruin his day with a photo <laughs> of him. Like, even the worst photo of him is probably going to be funny. He's probably yeah. going to laugh it off. With an 18-year-old girl, it was like, oh, I can really fuck this up if I retouch something too far yeah. or if I don't retouch it enough that I, like, I'm aware that when you're 30, you're going to look back at this photo mm -hmm. and this photo will dictate how you remember yourself. Right. So if I clean up everything and I get rid of some, or if I don't clean up everything, you're going to look back at yourself as a pimply face girl. <laughs> and it's like, you don't want that, right? You want to look right. back as like a pretty poor version of yourself. But if I make it too far, too extreme, then it's like... Well, what, what is that we... really me? Yes. Is that really yeah. what I looked like when I was in high school? Yes. Yeah, I get that. Um, I did a lot of uh, prom sessions. For, that's, you know, oh, that's my worst nightmare. Oh, yes. I know. And one of them was my <laughs> sister. <laughs> and so we would sit there and she's like, can you like change this, change that, change this? I'm like, okay, well, you're my sister. It's a little different. But like working with other people, it was kind of like, you know, they're in high school, you know, it's like. It's hard because then they're kind of like, they're very judgmental on themselves. And yes. I'm kind of like, well, I don't want to change this completely. But if you want me to, yeah. sure, we can hey, do that. Hey, you look really awkward with your date here. It's probably because <laughs> you're just uncomfortable with girls. But like, could you loosen up a little bit? Yeah. Exactly. No, my God. I've literally had to say that. I'm like, hey, guys, can you like not look stiff there? Like, we got this. Act natural. Don't act like I'm not here. <laughs> yep. There's a, a yeah. big park up the road. And like every year, it seems like that's where the town meets to like do their prom photos. Yes. And yeah. so when I drive by, I always drive by and like, this sounds shitty, but I just see a bunch of opportunity to make money of like I can like everyone has their mom they're taking photos I can yeah. go 20 bucks of like literally walk on my camera be like hey for 20 bucks here's all the delivery I have like yeah. a thing on my phone of five photos and just go person to person yeah. and it's like man I could make a bajillion dollars in a day but I just can't bring myself to take to that actually leap do it. into yeah. like yeah working with no, that population that is so true like yeah. I mean it's the type of population it is I agree yeah. um but it's so true we have the same park where everybody goes and mm -hmm. you know takes their photos and then you know there's the graduation photos too yes yep those are big opportunities, you mm -hmm. know, as you said, make money, even as bad as that sounds. Yes. But, you know, it's like one of those opportunities. But it's just like I can't get myself to do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I rather just like, you know, do it, anything else. <laughs> Where are you on weddings then? So I've done a couple weddings. And the other story that's brought up in my brain is that uh, so I've done like a hand two or three weddings. Yeah. Uh, and at some point after I did one, my sister goes, oh, so someday you're going to do my wedding. And I was like, literally, no. Like, I love you, but, like, <laughs> there's no way I'm getting involved in the day yeah. where you're the bride and I'm the one, like, servicing you. Like, I just want to be there and enjoy the wedding. Of I don't course, want to, like, yeah. be working. I don't want to, like, if my camera fails, I don't want to, like, fuck up my sister's wedding oh my day. God, like, no. it's yeah. a whole different level of personal. And also, like, well, weddings are really stressful for brides, oh, for yeah. grooms. And yeah. I assume, or stereotypically, at least more for brides. You don't want to add the stress. I don't want to be dealing with your stress on your wedding day. Like, that is someone else's problem. That yeah. is not my cup of tea. No, I agree. Uh, where are you on weddings? Have you done some before? Is it like, it's a version so, of the portraits. It's a version of the prom, but uh, it's, it's a, a little different. A little it's different. it's yeah. a little different because it's, I feel like, I mean, for some reason, it just doesn't feel too, as personal to me because it's like a one-on-one -on -one feels so much more personal and like riskier than like a wedding. Because Interesting. it's like, it's a larger party. You get to like really... You know, I've so I've been a second shooter for one event, um, and 
I really liked it. I mean, it happened to just so be people that I knew. <laughs> yeah. It didn't even mean to be that way. It's just the photographer that I was working with. He was like, come, you know, shoot this wedding with me. And I was like, okay, we went. And it just happened to be people I knew. So we were there. And um, I really like it because there's just, like, so much to capture. Like, every everywhere you turn, you're like, that's going to be something they want to remember. And it's like... I think, like, that's why I like it more than, like, portraits. It's different because it's, like, there's just so much to take in and, like, so much to photograph. But then there's that stress that comes with that, too. Like, oh, my God, like, I, I could be looking at something and I'm, like, I miss that, you know? And so it's, like, that type of thing. Um, do I want to do it? I've thought about it. <laughs> and so I would love to at some point. I, it's just a matter of, like, managing time. Yep. I currently feel like I have no time <laughs> to, like, open, like, branch out into that field. But I definitely want to and just, like, experiment with it. And if I end up hating it, then, you know, it is what it is. But at least I, <laughs> I, ex I went and, like, tried it. and like. That's, but I think it's a beautiful thing. Like, I really want to eventually experience that. I think know? I've tried it enough. And, yeah, I don't feel like it's for me. I feel like, yeah, to your point. But at least you tried it because it's, like, you never know until you're sitting there and you're, like, looking and editing all these photos and, you know. It you realize more, how different it is. I think the yeah. kind of similar to the band thing where there's a freedom in bands that doesn't exist in a wedding where it's yeah. the special day that's going to happen once. And like you said, yeah. every t everywhere you turn, there's something that you should have captured or could have exactly. captured. Exactly. And, and that then was there's like that way thing. too much for me. Yeah, it's like yeah. you kind of get overwhelmed with that. And like that's one thing that it was a struggle for me. I'm like, oh, man, like I should have captured that. And I think about it like hours later. I'm like, I still remember <laughs> like that moment that I should have taken mm -hmm. a photo of, you know. So it's like that. the stress of that, I guess, is kind of like, you know. What if you miss something? And then, yeah, it's like that. It just becomes stressful for me. I yep. get stressed because I'm like, well, if that was me, I would have wanted the photographer mm -hmm. to get that, you know? Yep. So it's like that. And yeah. It's also a weird thing of like, it's their special day and I don't want to put a camera in their face all day. When that I, too. I'm being yeah. paid to. Like, I know that's what they want me to do, but it's also like, no, I want you to have a moment. You kind of feel like you're in the way. Yeah. 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 Like constantly. And that's what yeah. I'm supposed to be. But it's like. Yeah. It's like you're paying me to do that. But at the same time, I feel like I'm just way too into your space. <laughs> yes. Where there's like yeah. an anonymity at a concert. I've always loved like the photo pit to me is this like weird thing of like we are the front row seat so in yeah. a sense we're the people the band see the most yeah. because we're the closest mm -hmm. but i also feel like no one looks at us like no one gives a fuck that they're looking at the front no. row behind us yeah. we paid to be there and they're we're in this weird like no man zone yeah of just yeah, yeah we're perfectly anonymous and i love that of like that's I what get i love the front about row it. but none of the pressure of the front row it's like nobody knows who i am it's yep. fine and yep. i like that i like like that it's not so personal it's like i'm yep. working with whoever i'm working with and then that's the end of that you know and nobody else is like oh She's taking photos. Let me look at what she's doing. No, that's not even a thing. Everybody's paying attention to what's happening, you know? And so it's just kind of like I get that. I get to be just non-existent. Yep. Essentially, I'm existing, but I'm, like, not in anybody's way. Unless I, you know, have to be. But it's just kind of like nobody's really paying attention to me, you know? Which is, I feel, a really good thing. Yes. I like that about it. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's this weird thing of, like, we're the center of the attention in the sense that we're creating art that will go somewhere. Like, this, the camera is the center of the attention. Right. It's really not us. We're just kind of right. like the, It's literally, yeah. It's yeah. like walking around the airport with, like, a dog, and everyone's, like, loving the dog, and the owner just cares kind about of there. The it's yeah. kind of the same thing to me. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, it's very The similar. only exception to that is when people at a concert are like, ooh, take a photo of us. And sometimes that's cool, and sometimes it's like, hey, no, I'm, I got other things like to go get done. I'm, like, working with them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, I got that. That's happened to me before. Uh, you yeah. mentioned that you're not in the way at a concert. Yeah. Has there ever been a time where you were in the way at a concert? And the the story I'll tell here while your brain sorts through all the memories and figures out which one you're happy telling yeah. you. Uh, the one for me is my first day of tour. Um, down in Louisiana. We're playing a show, and I go to, like, walk behind the drummer to, like, get a photo. Mm -hmm. And I bump into a surge protector. And it turns out that surge protector had all the cabs plugged in, all the lights, like oh, everything no. was plugged into this one shit. So when I pump it out, ev like the whole room stops. Everyone goes dead and everyone just like looks back at me. And of course, I like I'm looking at my camera. I look up and it's like, what the fuck? Like what happened out there? And everyone's looking at me like, yeah, what the fuck? What happened back there? And so I turn over and like bend the they're plugging the surge protector mm -hmm. as quick as I can, like pretend like that's going to fix it. And of course, nothing yeah. turns back on. Like yeah, The show's just done. Oh, uh, and thankfully, it was like through their last song, which Never. is, like, kind of nice because at least I didn't ruin the whole set. But, of course, it's also Listen, their last it song, so, so it's the one song that everyone wants to hear. Yeah. So it was this promo con. Yes, of course, it, thank God it wasn't the first song, but yeah. also, like, the last song is the only important song of the set, kind of. It's the right, last right. It's always that, yeah. Have you ever been in the way of a concert? Have you ever fucked something up? Have you ever been standing somewhere you shouldn't have been? You ever got kicked I've out by a tour manager? Luckily, no. But it's always a fear of mine. Yes. So, like... 
there's been so many moments where I've been, I like literally like stare at the cables on the floor. I'm like, okay, like I should walk over here and like yep. that way. I've always been so scared of that. And like, there's been instances where I'm like, you know, behind all the cabs and like there's a drummer and everything and there's all these cables. And there's been instances where like, I'll like step on a cable. And I'll be like, okay, like nothing happened. And then something happens with the guitar player, but it was like totally their fault. And I'm like, oh my God, did I do that? I know nothing about cables. I know nothing about what's plugged in where. I don't know anything, all right? So let's keep that there. Yeah. So when that that's happened, we're like, they fucked up something. But then I'm like, wait, did I do that? And like, you know, they figure it out because yep. it was them. But it's just like that stress of it. Oh my God, no. Like, I was literally talking to somebody about this the other day. I'm like, I'm always so anxious about like going up on stage to get these photos because it's like, what if I step on something and just everything stops? And then everybody's just like, <laughs> right, right, exactly. Luckily, that's I'll never tell you what, it doesn't feel me. that good. <laughs> and the whole rest of the show, everyone's like busting my balls about it, as you should. As, as you, you should. should do to as your they friend. should, yeah. But for me, it's like, this is my first day on tour. Like, I'm in a... Oh, this is the first day. First day of tour. Oh, shit. Uh, and so we'd been in the studio for a little bit, yeah. so I kind of knew everyone. But mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's still different. It's first show vibes. Yeah. Everyone's like all fucked up. And I, yeah. You just made it and worse. And I'm the one. <laughs> I'm the one who <laughs> fucked it up. And the rest no, of the show, I've been I'm so... known as the guy who unplugged the thing. Or, oh, my God. Oh, you're that photographer? And it's like, no, that, that was someone else. He just looked <laughs> a lot like me. I don't know. No, yeah, no. That That's always on the back of my head every single time. I get so nervous about getting up there. It's like one of those things. Well, I apologize yeah. for putting that in your brain then. Uh, I feel like I've also <laughs> been like thrown out by tour managers or tour managers who like don't know that I have a photo pass. Mm -hmm. So it's this weird thing of like, hey, you can't be up here. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of the set is not a good time to go back and forth. Like, no, I actually can be up here. Right. Is that something you... Yes. It, okay. that ha that's happened to me before. Um, they were never assholes about it, though, which is good. It's kind of, the, you know, I'm just kind of... I, they always give me a pass because, like, that's always been an issue where, like, they see me and they're like, what is she doing up here? Like, who is this person, you know? Yep. And so I've always gotten, like, a pass and they'll be like, hey, like, just keep this, you know, if there's an issue. And there was. <laughs> Once I was at a show at the Palladium... And um, they were just pretty much like, like, who are you? Like, you're not supposed to be back here. And then I had to, like, pull it out and be like, no, I can be back here. And they're like, okay. Like, but they're still questioning me. And I'm just going to, like, I promise I can be here. Yeah. Um, but I've never had any, like, extensive kind of, like, issues. Or, like, I, I've never been kicked out. I've never been, like, you know, yelled at or anything. Yeah. It's always been like, oh, like, is she supposed to be here? Yeah. It's been like that type of thing. Nothing extensive. Though. I've been close. I, don't, I, I think I said I've been kicked out. I don't know if it's actually true. As I think more about it. I've definitely been like scolded pretty firmly. <laughs> but it's always times where like I'm in the right. Of like okay. I was supposed to be here. Right. And you just don't know that. So I'm getting yelled at. And it's like, oh, you don't know. Like I know that you don't know. But also and I'm not going to argue with you. But also like, hey, dude, like chill kind right, of thing. Right, right. It's like chill out. There's no reason to yell. Yeah. This is like, a, are you supposed to be here? Yes. Okay. Prove that you can be here and you're good. You know, that's yes. it. That's like... The one flip know. side, though, is I do empathize with them. Like, I was talking about there's no barrier mm -hmm. to entry for cameras. Like, yeah. to be a photographer, you kind of have to buy a camera and that's it. Like, you don't... Yeah. It's not a doctor. You have to go to school. Right. There's no, like, no one has right. to hire you. Like, you don't have to get a hospital yeah. to interview you. Like, it, yeah. you kind of just buy a camera and then trick someone via email and you're in. Yeah, and essentially. In that sense, it's like, the amount of dumb idiots that tour yeah. managers must have seen or, like, stage managers must have seen where yeah. it's like... I get why they're yelling at me because of the other like other people that they probably had to yell at. Like they're assuming the worst. They have to assume the worst. They kind of have to. And yeah. I mean, there's some, you know, for lack of better words, crazy people mm -hmm. out there, you know, and that's an understatement of the century. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it's like I get it. But at the same time, you know, people are just there to do their job. You know, it's like it's yeah. one of those situations where yes. it's like, well, you can't really blame them. But at the same time, why are you like <laughs> on my neck about this? <laughs> yes. Find yeah. something else to stress exactly, about. Yes, you're probably exactly. just stressed out of the whole thing. And I get that I'm the one thing you can take it out on. But like, <laughs> it's not my fault that the catering's running late. Like, I can't do anything about it. Right, that. It's not my right. problem. Yeah, exactly. That's one of um, those things. When did, so you mentioned that you started doing like portraits with friends. When mm -hmm. does it start to become music stuff? Like you mentioned the first shows then with Lucas. Is yeah. that the, like, is that show number one for you? Have yes. you done any show? That is show number that one. That was show number one for me. Yeah. So and how does that go? Is this, um, where are we? Yeah, I guess is this a, a 20 person VFW? Are we at the yes. underground? Yes. <laughs> so it was like a 20 person VFW. And Hell it yeah. was okay. a really tight room. Okay. The Crunch House. Yes. I yes. don't know if I was ever there. I definitely have heard it's of like it. It's like a closet. Um, oh, I feel like I must have been there. I can't picture it in my brain. But yes, tell me about it's it. It's uh, literally like a closet. Okay. Essentially. And everybody's just on top of everybody. And so, you know, it was one of those things. I still remember it. And I'm just kind of like, yeah. Yep. I look at him sometimes. I'm like, you remember when you played in that closet? And he's like, 
I'm like, <laughs> but that was the first show I shot. Okay. Um, obviously, I was nervous because it's like, well, I'm just my first time with my camera. I didn't even have an external flash. I just had like the basic. That was. You know, Yep. DSLR. I haven't bought any extra gear. The basic kit lens, you know, it's it's kind of the very beginning of everything. Um, shot that show. Didn't know how to edit yet. <laughs> and so I'm like about to start editing. And then after that, um, I started to go to all their shows, started to go to like any local show that was happening. Um, and I just started to shoot bands for free. I'd be like, hey, do you mind if I shoot? No, way. I'm not charging. Yep. But, you know, and they would always say yes, obviously. <laughs> and so then I would shoot and, you know, I never started to be happy with my work until like a year or two later. I'd be like, okay, this is like better, but you, you know. Uh, not being happy with it is an interesting one to me because I yeah. don't think you would have gotten to show number two if you weren't happy with show number one, right? I think it's as we grow, we look back and regret, but there yeah. must have been some hit of dopamine no, at the start. Not no, a single one. Not a single one, no. And I remember it, I was disappointed. I was so disappointed. I was just like, well, you know, if I want to like keep doing it, I have to learn. So and the only way to learn is to actually go and do it. And that's like that's great. what good for you. I know. I, I kind of look back on it sometimes. I'm like, can you imagine if I that was it? First show, bad photos. That's it. That's like, where you know? most hobbies start and end for most people, though, right? Yeah, like we're yeah. bad at everything we start. That's what day one is of mm-hmm. anything we do. Exactly. And most people, myself included, don't get past day one of anything, right? Yeah. Like, there's a reason yeah. I'm not like huge and muscular right now. It's because I went to the gym for a month and I was like, eh, I'm good on this. I understand. <laughs> kept going, right? I, I did the same thing. <laughs> so like, we all have that that yeah. day one. Uh, yeah thing and if I kept working out since whatever 16 like yeah. I would but yeah. I didn't I didn't no, see yeah, so what I, kept like, you going past that all my hobbies one? have been the same way it's okay. like I start something and I, I wanted to play the guitar for example I started I played for a month maybe and then <laughs> I was like that's not for me yes <laughs> and it just sits there now so what made um, the camera worth what made it you what made you keep going with it honestly because with the whole portrait thing it was kind of the same thing I wasn't really happy with it but I kind of like I was like okay like I should keep going and so with shows I was like well it's going to be hard it's not an easy thing. You're shooting in low light. You have to know how to like know your camera. And so I just put the effort. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'll go and shoot other shows, see how it goes. Eventually, maybe I'll like it. Right. And so I just like the feeling of it. I think that's what it was. I like the feeling of like shooting live music. Um, just because like I grew up like big on music, not that genre, but I grew up like really big on music. And so, you know, eventually I was like, well, I'm going to try it. And as, like, the shows went on, I started to meet a lot of people and, like, making those connections and stuff. And I just really like that. I like being able to, like, meet new people. And, like, that's what I really liked. And a lot of these people are still some of my close friends today. And so, you know, and they would push me. And they'd be like, no, like, you should do it. You should do it. And I'm like, okay, like, I'll do it. And so I kept shooting. I kept shooting. And then eventually I met somebody who was like, hey, do you want to, like, you know, I haven't shot a bigger show before. I never, like, where I needed a photo pass. He was like, hey, like, I can get you into this show. I was like, okay. So... My first bigger show is Amir. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, Counterparts also played that. So this was like, I don't even know what this year it was. This is the Palladium, right? No, so it was at Gramercy. Okay, maybe, um, maybe the same the tour. City. Is King 810 also on that tour? Yes, yes, it was I that was, one. So I must have done this in Worcester, yeah. You yeah. probably did it in New York City. Yeah, so that was the first bigger show that I shot. Okay. Um, and after that, they were like, yeah, like I can help you get any show you want. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and so, yeah. yeah, no, they were very helpful. And so I was like, okay. So then... Um, you know, this person, they, they were able to get me in other shows. And then eventually I started to shoot for, like, those online pub- publications and oh, stuff. Yes. You know, we all go through that one. Um, and I had a lot of fun. It just became something that was, like, really fun to me. And it became something where, like, I started to shoot, like, four or five shows a month. And I became, like, five, six shows a month. And then, you know, started to increase. And then, yeah, that's pretty much how it went. It was just kind of, like... It was a risk because... I, and I don't know what happened there. It was more like, should I continue, should I not? I'm not happy with this, but... Mm-hmm. I ended up continuing, so. How long yeah. was it from the local show to the Amir show? Ish. Like, a, are we talking like a year? Are we talking like a month? Are we talking We're six talking years? We're talking like a year. I mean, a year, okay. Mm. Um, yeah. The other piece of that that I wanted to, the publication I wanted to come back to, oh, the music part was one thing. You kind of glossed over that. It's yeah. wasn't like your musical <laughs> home. Uh, it feels like this is a wild world to like enter into this isn't your musical home. Where like, I grew up yeah. listening to all this stuff. So to I me, like, not. this <laughs> was the only thing that I was interested in shooting. Like, I've yeah. never... You mentioned portraits. Like I did the family thing once mm-hmm. and then my next thing was a concert and then okay. it's been concerts from there. And I've mm-hmm. done a couple of port- like, yeah, I've done yeah. the odd job, but like it's been 99.9% concerts yeah. and 95% of those have all been in this weird niche that we're in now. Yeah. What did you grow up listening to and why does this become the the way it? Listen in? to mainstream music. Okay. You know, like I was like really into like R&B and like, you know, the teeny boppers. Oh, yes. And, you know, is, that your, is that still your, is that still your cup of tea? 
No. Okay. Actually, it's it, it kind of <laughs> no, 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 no. It's um, it changed really drastically. Um, and so you know, when I got to like I don't know the seventh grade. I mean, I got into like metal music somehow in elementary school. I don't know how it happened. I just so happened to discover Crown the Empire. That okay. was the first band <laughs> that I discovered. And then eventually I was like, well, you know, I think I kind of, you know, enjoy this. So I started, I started to, uh, you know, discover new bands. And, okay. then, um, and then I met Lucas. <laughs> and then we kind of gotcha. like bonded over music a lot. Um, and that's when I started to go to shows. And I just, yeah, that's I, I just, that's, that's, that's yeah. kind of how I just like, <laughs> Ended up in the genre. Um, yeah, I, was, I really liked metalcore at first, and then I kind of just went all the way down to, like, deathcore, hardcore, mm -hmm. um, and then it made a switch. So, like, currently I'm really into EDM. <laughs> so, okay. like, kind of... all over the place. Yeah, I am all over the place. I like the exploration there. Yeah. Um, yeah. The publication part is the mm -hmm. next, like, great realm that I'm to. Yes, mm -hmm. I... It's one of those parts of me that I always forget. And I'm going through my email and I'll see me yeah. emailing someone like, hey, yeah. could you get me into this photo pass? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I shot Warped two or three times. Okay. And... Uh, each time I did it for a new publication because each time I was so unimpressed by the years before publication. Yeah. And it was always this weird thing of like, uh, at that time, I felt like my Instagram was doing better than a lot of these publications. And it was this weird yeah. thing of like, why do I need this thing, approval? And like, why does this matter to the show when it's not going to go anywhere for them? I have to write this yeah. article that no one's going to read. Yeah. Uh, and of course, writing the articles is what the publication wants the most from you. Right. And it's like, I want photos. It's art. Publication doesn't mean shit. And like, I, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm dated, but like no one's ever read an article about a concert and be like, oh, I have to go to that. Like Taylor Swift didn't yeah. sell a single ticket because of a write-up. It was all right. the word of mouth. It was all the photos and like... And the music itself. And all yeah. the... No, no, literally nothing to do with that <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. But um, <laughs> but on the band, it's like maybe with Taylor Swift, someone could write like a, an article that gets like the moms and the mm -hmm. parents and the old... But like with our like metal demographic, like no yeah. one reads about crowd killing and is like, no. wow. Can't yeah. wait to go see Kublai Khan this weekend. Right, like, right, yeah. That's just not like Kublai Khan had an electric set. It's like no one gives a fuck. That's not selling nobody any cares. tickets. Yeah, for us. Nobody like, cares. The photos of them will help, yeah. but the publication doesn't. Uh, are you just like finding publications online? Like that's my memories. I was just kind of Googling like articles about bands in Connecticut and then clicking and sending an email and hoping yeah, it Yeah, so it sort of became where I was looking through Facebook groups. <laughs> yep. It became that sort of thing. Yep. And, you know, I ended up finding some and – it was kind of the same thing where like my Instagram was doing better anyway. Um, and so I would only be like, well, I'll occasionally shoot for now until I, you know, can get into shows without having to do mm -hmm. that. Um, and so, yeah, I, I wrote uh, a couple articles, you know, they're still up somewhere. Um, yep. <laughs> and I look back on them sometimes. I'll like randomly remember, like so randomly remember. Mm -hmm. I'll be like, damn, I wonder if that's still up there. And so, you know, I've like looked them up and I'm like, well. That's really badly written, but you know, it's it's there, but it's like I'm sure yeah. nobody has read it anyway. No, like, yeah. you know, and it's like one of those things where it's like in like theory, it's a really cool thing, you know, a publication where like your work is there, you're writing about it and people pay attention. But that's not realistic. A lot of people don't go and they're like, "Oh, I'm going to go read the new like mm -hmm. article that just came out that this person wrote about this show and see if I want to go." Yep. You know, it's like not that type of thing. And so I I kind of just let that go. Yes. I was just like Ultimately, that yeah. I think uh, at some point I go from photo into video more so. And I think yeah. that was one of the pieces where I think mostly it was just the videos are more enjoyable. Like the, yeah. the medium works better for yeah. me. But one piece of it for sure was mm -hmm. that of like I was tired of applying for shows and they mm -hmm. say no unless you can get someone else to like co-sign this. Right. And it's like I don't need them. They're not helping me. Like I'm yeah. just sending them work and I'm not getting it. I'm already working for free. I can't work That's for free for point, more yeah. than one person. That was here. the one like, thing though. Yeah. It was yeah. like you're working for free anyway. And it was just kind of like, you know, it was that thing. And so yeah. that's that's also why I was just like, well, yeah. you know, I and can the, do this on my own then. And <laughs> if I do good enough with this article and photo, like they're yeah. going to make ad revenue off this. Like the, yeah. the website will. Yeah. And so it was this weird thing of like I, I'm making the band money by giving them photos. I'm making mm -hmm. the venue money by making them look cool. I'm making the website money. And yeah, I'm paying for parking. <laughs> like, how the fuck exactly, does this all Exactly, yeah. yeah. It's like, you know, yeah, yeah. I get that. Um, yeah. I had some friends who started their own publication. And that mm -hmm. was an interesting, like, workaround to me mm -hmm. of, like, oh, you can just approve yourself a photo pass and yeah. just by having a blog, it gets you in. And that's the only uh, version of this that seems, like, sustainable to me. Because I think that yeah. still is, like, the meta, the way that most people get into shows. Yeah. I think it, like, if I was applying to the Amir show this weekend, or, yeah. I don't know, I think maybe there's an Amir show, whatever, who cares? Whatever. Um, <laughs> If I was applying to that show, mm -hmm. I probably would still need a publication to approve it. Or at this point, I'd probably try and go through the band or try and go through mutual yeah. friends. But like, yeah, I think I would still need a publication. And it's like, no, I, I'm it's just, like a, it's I'm not even worth not. it. Yeah, yeah, like if I don't have like mutual friends or like know somebody who can like help me out with that, I simply just 
don't yep. <laughs> at this point. I simply just don't because yep. it's like I don't want to write anything. I yep. I just want to take photos. Yeah. I don't want to write. And you I, know, it's like it's kind of hard to also because it's like taking photos is one thing, but then writing an article based on the show that you saw is is, is a little hard. And I'll, I'll tell you, it's because like when I'm shooting, I'm so focused on shooting. I'm yes. not focused yep. on my experience at the show. So it's like. It's that type of thing where it's kind of like, well, I'm trying to remember, and at this point, I'm making what I'm writing up. Literally, I'm yeah. Googling the set list from yes. last night and yeah. hoping it's the same one from six nights ago. Exactly. Because I don't I know what I Googled song it, played. or like if I'm, yeah. I'm like, and then I'll listen to the music. I'm like, okay, okay. Yep. Like, this is what I can write. It's nothing to do with what I actually experienced, yep. you know? Yep. It became that sort of thing. And it also, yeah. like, the article, I think, succeeds if you're shooting your favorite band. Most bands we shoot aren't our favorite bands. Like, mathematically, if we, if we shoot yeah. 100 shows in a year, like, five or ten of them are, like, shows we would have bought tickets to. Right. And a lot right. of them are just shows where it's like, oh, this is at the venue nearby. It's yeah. on a date. I'm free. I'm going to go to that one. Yeah. And you don't yeah. want me writing an article about that show that I no. just showed up at because I had nothing better to it's do It's going to evening. be the most generic article I've ever written if I do that. So, <laughs> and by know. the tenth article, it's like, I literally feel like I could just copy and paste the All of it, point. Yeah. Like it's, It became, like, that yeah. thing where, like, I was just like, well, I'll look at a previous article I wrote and just, like, say it differently. Yeah. It became like that, yeah. And it was and, just like, well, there's no point in me doing this. I'm not actually enjoying it yep. you know and I, I enjoy the photo part and that I liked writing the article not so much <laughs> uh, my only concern here is I always feel like I sound bougie or I don't want to get bougie of like I think I uh, the success that I think I have found I think I attribute to legwork I attribute mm -hmm. to me going out and working for the publication yeah. and eating uh, eating shit for them for lack of yeah. a better term yeah. so it's like I now as I'm having this conversation or just like in general as an ideology it's like I don't want to get too far away from that but there also has to be a point where I draw the line of like, no, I can't do this. Any like, right. I can't do this for free anymore. I can't drive all around the place and pay all the money yeah. and like take days away from people who are asking for my time yeah. just to go yeah. do this thing because I think there's exposure bucks involved. I, I mean, listen, tr trust me, I enjoyed it because it was like the people I was working with, they were yeah. great people. It just sort of became a thing that you kind of just outgrow after mm -hmm. a, a specific amount of time. You're just like, well, I'm ready to like just not do better, but just like separate from yes. that and kind of try to do it on my own. I yeah. Just, yeah. I guess for me, it was always that weird thing of like, when do you pull that plug? Like, and I still, I think I'm still wondering. I'm like, still wondering that yeah. too. I'm kind of still like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. It, yeah. yeah. I think right now I'm kind of completely separated <laughs> from it. We pulled the plug. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. right now I'm like completely separated. But at, at that, there was one point where I was just kind of like, I don't know, you know. Hell yeah. So we shoot that yeah. first Amir show. I'm going, going back a little mm -hmm. here. But yeah, we shoot the first Amir yeah. show. Uh, and I assume by then we're starting to feel more validated. Like you kind of mentioned that show one. I was, was like proud of that one. <laughs> yes. And we're proud of the photos after because you mentioned the show one. You were still like, ah, fuck this. Yeah. But by Amir, are by you Amir, happy with I the think, photos? I think especially after that show, mm -hmm. I was just like, oh, okay. I can do something. Yep. <laughs> so it sort of became, I learned how to edit. You know, yep. I think those photos are actually on my Instagram. And so like, you know, I was like, okay, I learned how to edit. These photos are kind of cool. I'm going to continue doing this. And that's when I started. To, that's when I got the publication. There you go. And that's when I, I started to, like, shoot way more shows and after you that. probably also discovered how much of the photographer's job is not the photographer. And what I mean by that is, like, yeah. there's not much you can do with a crunch house. Like, no. there's not a whole lot you can do that's yeah. going to make it look that cool. And for right. me, the underground is kind of in the same boat of, like, there's not a whole lot you can do yeah. to make it look that good. You can right. do your best. You can have photos that you yeah. kind of like. But then the first time you shoot at the Palladium or like the House of Blues in Boston is my mm -hmm. personal favorite of yeah, like I have not shot there before. Okay, so you know, uh, right. it's one of those venues where I feel like I can't take a bad photo. It's just so gorgeous and like there's I so know. much. And the Palladium is a similar thing. Like it's an old theater. Like it's not designed for. It's not the Crunch House. It's a long I one. love the Palladium. I do. So I don't shoot there just because I'm from New York. Mm -hmm. I don't go there often. But every time that I shot there, especially the last time I shot there. Every single photo I took there, I was like, wow. Yep. Like, just because of the light set up, you know, like, it's all of that. Big, it yeah. yeah, and it's big. Yep. There's so much space. So it's like, yeah, I mean, I definitely have favorite venues where I'm like, if I shoot there, I know I'm going to be happy with it. Mm -hmm. Just because, like, of where it is, the setup, the lighting, you know, all of that. Um, Gramercy is one of those, you know. It's like there's specific venues where I'm like, I want to shoot there. And then there's other venues where I'm like, do I want to shoot there though? Like, yep. you know, cause I already know, like there's not much I can do to mm. make these looks different from like the last photo. It's like all going to be kind yeah. of in the same style. It's all about how I took it, I guess. Yes. Yeah. yeah. In my first year of shooting, I shot a hundred shows, which okay. always has stuck out to me as one of those, like, I don't, that doesn't make sense to me that every three days I was mm -hmm. at a different concert. Like mm -hmm. I don't 
believe that sustainable or possible, but like I have the records of it. Like I know where I was <laughs> and like I know there's a hundred of them. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think it was maybe like 88 shows and like 10 promo sessions, another okay. one or two, but like whatever, fuck it, call it a hundred. Okay. Um, the reason I bring that up though is because most of that was at the underground or at similar okay. local venues. Yeah. And then it, as that kept going over years where that I haven't shot a hundred events in a year since that yeah. first year, it certainly dropped off a lot. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it was this thing of like, I just did it so many times. And mm -hmm. then I got to that place that you're talking about of like, mm -hmm what the fuck am I going to do now? Like I've done everything <laughs> possible here. Yeah. And that like dipped me for a minute. And then it's recently become more of like an exciting challenge of like, yeah, what, like I've taken everything here. What the fuck? How do I break this? What do I do? That's weird and different and exciting. Exactly. Like, how do so I now it becomes a challenge. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've always like posed that to myself now, especially when I shoot at the underground. <laughs> yes. So they've helped us recently. They've done yeah. a little bit, but it's okay, still, yeah, they have. It's yeah, still, yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, not much but more than a closet. I agree. Yeah. I agree. It's like one of those things where it's like for a while I would look at them and be like, well, you could tell I shot there. <laughs> like you could yeah. tell. So how do I make that different? And I got to a point where, like, I stopped shooting with a flash, see how that goes, mess with color, make mm -hmm. it abstract. And I was like, okay, well, there's different things that I can do <laughs> to, yeah. like, fuck around with it. So it doesn't all just look the same. Yes. You know, because, yeah, it started to look the same. And I'm like, well, you know, there's not much I can do to, like, make it. I think my goal now is just don't make it look like you shot there. <laughs> Literally, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. And then yeah. there's some pride in that. And I think, yeah, even the – it starts to become, like, unfulfilling just on the editing side. Like, I would open the photos and be like, I've edited all these before. Yeah. And I've never seen them before. This is a yeah. new show that I shot last but night. But it's, like, like, literally because of where I've it was. I've done it all yeah. before, yeah. especially with the yeah. flash. You're right that I've uh, had to be more creative with the flash because yeah. it does sterilize everything in a way that just yeah. makes everything feel so the identical same. to the previous the same. thing. Yeah, it makes yeah. it look the same. And I think, like – yeah, I for a while now I've kind of been shooting without it because I'm just kind of like, well, I want the color, I want like you know mm -hmm. whatever, and I feel like I mean the flash like obviously just kind of like takes that out, and so that's kind of like what I've been doing, and I've just been really experimenting with color because I feel like it's just like I said, it just depends on the venue because like the Webster, the Underground, you know, it's one of those things where it's just like you have to try something else, yes. you just have to because otherwise it's just going to be the same thing over and over yep. again, and it's like. It's, a, it's like a myself thing. It's not even who I'm working with. I know they're going to be fine with whatever I give them. But it's like for myself, it has to look different because it has to be like a challenge for me. I love to be challenged. And yeah. so it's like even if it's in the smallest ways. I've um, also heard uh, someone gave me the wisdom of like don't don't create to a point where it starts to feel like a nine to five again. Yeah. Like if, if yeah. what you're doing starts to feel that routine and that mundane thing that I think we all or that I personally kind of run from, mm -hmm. it's like if I'm starting to feel that, that I'm doing something wrong. And mm -hmm. if this thing becomes that nine to five kind of dreary existence that I yeah. stereotype and dread in my head. Then yeah. it's like, fuck, find, find anything else to do. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. No, I, I feel the same way about that. <laughs> uh, I appreciate that. You said that you loved the challenge. Uh, what's something yeah. else you like challenge yourself recently on? So we talked about, yeah, kind of the venue challenges. Yeah. Like, is there something that you're working on currently in the context of general photos? Is there a, a composition thing, a color thing, uh, a I new think, lens that you're exploring? Like what's something you're for me, currently working on? Not necessarily photo, but video. Okay. I want to learn video. I mean, I've dabbled in it a little bit, but it's just, um, it's a whole different thing on its own. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, and, and instead of like learning them both at the same time, I, you know, I'm taking that on now mm -hmm. and it's kind of, it's a whole different thing. I mean, I know photo, but I don't know video and you would think they kind of like work, but they don't at all and so it's like you know it's new softwares that you have to learn i was mm -hmm. just you know i hate adobe so you know <laughs> premiere really it's the best out there but you know what are you editing photo are you editing photos in lightroom or are you, you explore lightroom i do okay. for photos and then for video i've been uh doing stuff on premiere and stuff but it's like just learning it. it's been so ridiculous yeah. um and so you know it's like having the time to do that, sitting down and watching those videos. That's that's like one challenge I've kind of been like, well, this year I'm going to do that. I'm going to learn it. I'm going to practice more. You know, whenever I get the chance, I'm going to just do that. I think um, the past couple of shows I've shot, I've also done video. I've kind of just been like sitting, there, just like for myself, just so I could sit there and like actually like edit and like learn stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's my biggest challenge, I think, right now that I'm like working with. Uh, yeah. And what what's held you up? Like what has made video unappealing in the past? Where to me, video is like always made so much more sense and been so much more exciting. And I recognize I, that I'm in the I minority know. here. It's like, but it's like for me, there's things. like a freedom in it where photo feels like so linear and I get tired of making a hundred different pieces of art. Yeah. And in video, it's like, oh, I can sink all of me into one big yeah. piece of art. And I love that. Where are you getting you held know, up? I've spoken to other people about this before and it's um, – it's, it's funny because everybody's like, oh, well, I started with video first, but I can't do photo. Mm -hmm. And I'm like – 
the complete opposite. I'm like, yeah. well, I started with photo and I can't do video. And it's kind of like this that thing where it's like, well, I think that a photo for me was just um, what I ended up starting with. It kind of just was what it was. Um, and I think video, it wasn't unnecessarily that, um, like it wasn't necessarily that it was unappealing. I think it was more just so I didn't want to sit there and take the time to do yes. it. But now it's become like an industry standard where mm -hmm. like you have to do both. You kind of have to. Yeah. You know, nobody's going to bring out two people and one does photo and one does video. It's kind of, you have to know both. And I like it. I mean, I like it because like you said, it's kind of like this big thing that you can like experiment with and you're not just creating a hundred, you know, different things. Mm -hmm. It's like this one big thing that comes together. And so I really like it. I mean, so far I've only done like recaps and stuff, but something that I'm really interested in eventually when I feel confident enough to is I really want to like learn like music videos and stuff, um, which that's way down the line at sure. some point. But it's like, yeah, it's like one of those things that I didn't find unappealing. It's just more so I think I was just kind of like, mm, do I want to really go down that rabbit hole right now? Because it's just so much information yep. and so much to learn and so much to experiment with. Which is yeah. weird though, because you have, uh, I always look at like, as like an exponential growth. Yeah. So to me, like Lightroom is the base, uh, videos in the middle, and then yeah. like 3D stuff's at the end of that exponential curve. So as I'm I now jumped. learning into <laughs> that, yeah, now as I'm learning into that 3D stuff, it feels like the same jump that I made from uh, photo to video, where yeah. it's that same thing of like, oh, this is familiar, yeah. but not at all what I'm used to. It's yeah. weird that, just like you said, yeah, <laughs> you went from one to three and now back to two. It's a very, like, unique pathway through that. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. I, like, yeah, it's it, it became super challenging because, like, I went from, you know, 2D, you're creating a photo, to 3D, where I'm, like, literally building stuff. And, you know, it, it, it became, I mean, that took a long time to mm -hmm. be, like, okay, like, I can do this because it's, it's so much that goes into that, like, 3D stuff. Um, and I'm jumping back. I don't know. It's so no worries weird. at all. I just did a double take though. We're already at 45 minutes yeah. and I thought we were like 20 minutes oh in and God. I was like, whoa, yeah, we're flying, <laughs> um, which is great. Cause I was going to bring up the design stuff. And I was like, oh, I was going to do that later. And then I realized we're already at later. So perfect. Um, so then the design thing is, yeah, a fascinating point. I'm very excited to talk to you. So I know yeah. that you, uh, have an architecture background and an mm -hmm. interior design mm -hmm. background. You said this is from school. This is kind of yeah. your, your mainstream focus yeah. with photography is on the side of that. So initially I wanted photo to be my main thing. I really wanted to do that, but then I got anxious about it. And yes. so I'm like, well, I really want to continue and get a degree, right? Mm -hmm. And so I kind of went into this like completely blind to it. Um, okay. It was experimental for me. It was going to be a challenge, but I think that's what I wanted. Um, I mean, I was always interested in like design, um, but just I didn't know that's what I wanted to do. And so I went into it. Um, I'm actually graduating this semester. And Probably so I'm, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and so I'm like about to be done. And looking back on it, I just saw it so much, so much information. And, you know, it's not that it's hard. It's just really demanding. Yeah. And so I think that's kind of – that's where photo kind of became a side thing now. And mm -hmm. it's become my main thing. Like the interior and architectural stuff has become my main thing. And that's what I dedicate mo more – like the most time to right now. Um, yeah, I kind of – took a step back from photo and have been putting like all my time to like creating stuff. Like. There's such, yeah, it's a weird thing where they are such so mm -hmm. nearby to me, but also yeah. so far apart where like yeah. the, in photo, you're looking at something and figuring out how to make it look cool. And yeah. in 3D, you're starting from scratch. Oh, like, how do I design this thing and then yeah. make it look cool? Yeah. And that's always been like a really overwhelming mm -hmm. like sandbox to me of yeah. like, I can build anything. So mm -hmm. then what do I build? But on the flip side, it's really exciting where I think concerts kind of got tiring to me also of like mm -hmm. everyone else here is seeing what I'm seeing. How do I create something that only I can see? Right. And that's where the 3D thing comes in. Yeah. Of like Whatever I make is 100% a product of my imagination. It's your yeah. And it may not be perfect. It might have other yeah, mm -hmm. pros and cons to it, yeah. but like it's mine. If it's nothing else, it is exclusively mine. It's technical too. Yes. I mean, it's, it's very technical. It's time consuming. I can't tell you how long I've spent looking at my computer screen and just being like, well, I don't like that. And then I start from scratch. Yes. It's, it's, it's a process. You kind of go back and forth and I've sat there and, you know, I'm like making these floor plans in like a notebook and I'll be like, okay, like I'll, I'll, you know, I'll go and put this onto the computer and then I'll be like, wow, I hate that. And so I'm like starting from scratch again and, you know, it's, but it's sort of the thing where at the end, it's very, very like, I don't know, it makes you feel like you did something amazing and you're like, well, this is mine. I made that, you know, and it's, you feel proud of yourself at the end. It's a big yeah. thing because it's like it takes so much time, you know, and it's like for me, it's that satisfaction that it's, I'm looking at. I'm like, I made that. Mm -hmm. I made that shit. Like, you know, yes. and it's, it's it's a great feeling. Yeah. And so I really like the field that I'm in. Mm -hmm. 
It's it's interesting though how it kind of went from one to the other. I was gonna say it sounds like yeah. video would be the perfect way to like fulfill the creative like like ownership itch <laughs> without having to do all the extra like floor plants to make the sake. Like yeah. it seems like a perfect little hybrid for you there. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's what seems, I'm realizing I guess, yeah. now. I think yeah. I'm realizing that now. I I made that jump and I'm like, wait, I could have mm. <laughs> easily <laughs> slowly done that. Um, but I kind of just went from one to the other, and now I'm, like, backtracking. Just fire, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but it's fine. I mean, that's my – I guess that's how my <laughs> process works. But I'm enjoying it. I mean, I, I really look forward to the video thing and, mm -hmm. you know, combining that. Because now that I know 3D stuff, now that I know photo stuff, I mean, obviously – the 3D stuff is like architectural stuff. It's different. But at the same time, it's not so different. Not, it yeah. comes together because it's like your brain starts to think about things in certain ways. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I mean. I've also, uh, I assume in architecture, there's a similar, uh, I assume this is similar. And please stop me if it's not. But yeah. in video, as I'm like creating, I'm um, thinking of uh, what did I create recently? I created a church at some point in the last mm -hmm. couple of years. And so in that church, I like you animate the camera. Yeah. Uh, and it also meant that I could animate uh, a fisheye lens. I mm -hmm. could uh, like a 900 millimeter zoom. Yeah. Like I could use any lens in the world. Mm -hmm. And because it's virtual, I can also fly around the church and I can mm -hmm. see what a camera looks like from the top, from the bottom, from the side. Yeah. I can like get a sense of all these angles. And now I feel like in real life, when I walk into a church or walk into a warehouse, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, I've practiced exploring this with my camera and I'm mm -hmm. a lot more comfortable going, oh, this is where the camera should be. Yeah. I assume there's a similar thing that you've developed yeah. with architecture that then kind of enriches the photo where it's like, oh, I don't need to take 100 test photos. I kind of walk into the building and immediately go, okay, 35 millimeter in that corner and that's it. Yeah, I mean, I've done that where I'm like, I'll create a, say I create a building, mm -hmm. right? I just finished a project. It was like a 20,000 like square foot thing. And so I'm like looking at it, I'm just like spinning around it and like in my computer and I actually went and visited the site in real life, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, well, I looked at it from this thing. I, like, imagine it, and it, kinda, it makes it easier. I mean, like, you, because you can literally do that on a computer, and then it makes your life easier when you, like, mm -hmm. those two work together in that sense, I think. For me personally, I think it, it's helped me with my photo stuff, too. That, to me, has been the best yeah. part of 3D. It's, like, yeah. that experience that I can't get in real life. I no, can't yeah. spend six hours with a car. Over it. <laughs> flying over the car and yeah. doing it. But I can set up a C-stand and get my camera over the car. Right, because you already saw it, saw it. And yeah. so you, you're like, okay, well, this is going to work. So, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, I think it's helped me in every aspect, I think. Because um, now, I mean, I look at things differently. Like, uh, I'll look at, you know, a stand, a light or whatever, and I'm, all I think is measurements and then what it can look like from different angles. So it's like now yep. when I shoot in anything, I mean, I can shoot a show or whatever, I'm like, okay, I'm going to try to get it from, like, all these different angles. And I, I literally just sit there and I'm like, pressing it for like forever <laughs> to try to get all the angles that I'm thinking of. So yep. I think it definitely makes you think a certain way. It's like yeah. kind of switches your mindset a little bit. Yeah. And what do you like to create? Is it mostly building? It sounds like it's mostly architecture related or um, interior of architecture. Yeah. So, uh, so the, the, the degree I'm getting is interior design. However, <laughs> I don't really like the whole, like, there's like this kind of like thing where people are like interior designers or decorators. And it's like, well, no, <laughs> we're not at all. That's what I would have thought. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I know a lot of people do, but it's like, I'm more into like the architectural side of it. So like the actual structures of things, um, you know, instead of just like, okay, well, a couch is going to look lacy. No, I think about like the whole structure and like, well, if we put a wall here, if we do all of these other things, if we change the structure of the outside, if like we, you know, it's like all of those things. And so, um, like I work at a residential interior design firm right now and it's kind of like that thing where she's more of a decorator, but I mean, it's, it's still fun, but I think personally what's more fulfilling for me is like, um, hospitality, hospitality design. So it's kind of like, uh, doing like nightclubs, restaurants, hotels, like these things that a okay. lot of people get to experience. And so those are large scale projects. Mm -hmm. Um, and it doesn't only become of the interior. It's like everything else that goes into it. And so I'm like more ar architecturally kind of like centered with that. I, yeah. I like that you mentioned hotels because hotels to me are the fascinating thing if they always try and look as expensive as possible for as little <laughs> money as possible. Yeah. And when I, I was in Vegas for a couple uh, – week, I guess, a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and walking around those hotels was crazy to me of like yeah. – this isn't luxury. You just mm. like painted books on the wall to yeah. look rich here. And it's this weird it's easy. thing. Of, like, it works. It's yeah. so easy to do that. Because yeah. now that I like know that and I'm yep. aware of that, I'm just kind of like, well, I walk into a hotel, I'm like they did this and then now it makes it look like, you know, mm -hmm. the money you pay for, you're like, you think you're living this great life. It's yeah. like, no, they just did it. It's like an illusion almost. Yep. It's an it illusion yeah. that they create. And it's so easy to do that. It's so easy to manipulate people who don't know about 
what design can do for you and how you can interact with things. I yeah. frequently call my camera, like I say that my camera's about lying. That if I do my job well, I'm just yeah. telling a really articulate yeah. lie. Yeah. And it's the same idea there. Of like, it's the same idea. It's not about making someone yeah. look good. It's about creating a frame where they look good. And that's yeah. a very different thing than someone yeah. who looks beautiful in the room. It's mm -hmm. a photo of someone that looks beautiful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And it's, yeah, like it, the, yeah. it's kind of like that thing. You're creating an illusion, but you're also lying. <laughs> yep. And it's like, both. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're lying. Which is kind of satisfying to me. I think, uh, I don't know. It's it's manipulative, right? Like you it's just have to be up, a good but, liar. Yes. So you have to just be a good liar because it's like in that sense, like you can lie and do these things, and then you know people realize. It's about making people not <laughs> realize that you mm -hmm. did that, you know. And of course, that's yeah. that's music videos to me. Of like, yeah. I, I don't want to tell you we filmed in a warehouse. I want it to look like we filmed a big black right. void. How do I transform yeah. this? Exactly. Thing? It's like or I've filmed sort of so thing. many videos right where we're sitting, mm -hmm. and like some of them for sure, you could put a put your finger. I'd be like, oh, that was definitely the basement. Yeah. I'm sure some of them you can't. Yeah. Um, or like the half-hearted videos. I think we've done 10 videos, and I think like eight of them Those have been crazy. in Jay's basement. Thank you. <laughs> um, but they've all been in the same yeah. basement, the same room. Like they're basically like you could walk into his house and be like, oh, here and here and yeah. here and here. Yeah. Uh, and that's always a fun part to me of like, mm -hmm. yeah, this. If I we can't film the same location every time. But right. I can tell a lie every time that makes you think exactly, this is a new location. Exactly, yeah. That's and it's like, challenge. you know, exactly. And there's a whole, I mean – your imagination can yep. go so far with that, you know, yeah. like creating that. And like nobody else is going to know, but you know. <laughs> and so it's like that self-satisfaction that you did that yep. too. Yeah. 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 Um, hell yeah. Then is there like a architectural like place you like to go? You mentioned that you'd went to some site. You described like that you like nightclubs and yeah, all the uh, consumer side of stuff. Yeah. Uh, are there landscapes or places you like to go? Is there like a dream destination that you go see? Is there a church in Europe somewhere that you're like, fiending to go get your hands on like yeah what Dude, is your so your many mecca? places i okay. can't even tell you <laughs> i have i literally have a spreadsheet hell yeah of like all these places that i want to go okay. to and i right now i'm like invested in going to belgium <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just because it's like i don't know everything's so different just like the you know the type of architecture but i also like I'm so into gothic architecture, so like going to like Germany, for example. Like I, I, I mean, there's so many different places that you can like go to, and you know, I think for me, um, I would love to see that in real life, but like obviously, I, I'm not gonna, you know, get on a plane right now and go to Belgium, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, I think here there's not many places that I go to for inspiration. It's more so. Um, you know what I think it is, is I read a lot. And so a lot of the books that I read are dystopian and like look at these different types of worlds. And so in my head, I'm kind of like, that's kind of like the, what like is a, a basis of inspiration for the work that I create. I am so, so glad you said that. So <laughs> my whole family is a reader and okay. I am not. I okay. feel like I grew up as a reader mm -hmm. and somehow in middle school, it just totally, completely <laughs> left my bones and yeah. it just became a chore. It became homework. It became an assignment. Just it became one of those things where like you're forcing yourself. Hated to Hated it. it. Mm -hmm. Hated every second of it. I would spark note all the books and my dad's an English <laughs> teacher. So he knows all the books. So like, yeah. he would kind of quiz me and yeah. I very clearly know that I haven't oh read anything. God. And like, it was always a, always a joke. And in the last like, I don't know, two, three years or so, I've mm -hmm. like made myself start reading. Mm -hmm. And this started with a 10 minute timer where I literally set a timer for 10 minutes to <laughs> sit down with a book and stare at it. And if yeah. I read, if I, whatever happens for those 10 minutes, like I'm just going to sit there with a book mm -hmm. and the timer goes off, I can close the book and move the fuck on mm -hmm. with my life. Uh, which was half like a meditative thing of like, mm -hmm. let me tell myself that I can take a 10 minute break yeah. and half like, let me try reading for exactly what you're saying. Of mm -hmm. like, I don't consume a lot of media and as a visual person, mm -hmm. movies, I'm trying to get into movies now. It's my new, my new venture. <laughs> um, but it feels tough of like, I don't want to recreate what they've done. And also like what they did in Hollywood isn't representative of what I can do with my bands. Like it's just, right. uh, the budgets aren't the same. Like it's mm -hmm. a very different project. It's a very different scale of project yeah. in terms of time, in terms of people involved. Like it's not a good way mm -hmm. to learn. So then it was like, well, where do I get ideas that aren't, that are visual ideas, but I don't see them in my eyes. And reading, yeah. of course, becomes it the perfect is. tool here. Yeah. Uh, so I kind of picked up reading almost as like a way to make myself better, as a way to like create more. Mm -hmm. As like, I looked at like eating vegetables of like, fuck these <laughs> things, but I know that spinach will help me at some right, point in life. Right, yeah. uh, so I'm very glad that you uh, attribute reading to some of your visions because it yeah. uh, reinforces. I think my... right now it's a big thing like yeah. for that. Yeah. I mean, well, I always liked reading, <laughs> but um, you know, it's been, it's like to a point where like I have to set a timer for myself to be like okay you can only read like an hour yeah, that's fine. like you have, you have stuff timers. to do yeah, yeah like you have stuff to do like you only have an hour um and so you know it's like because of the books that i read um because of i don't know it kind of just creates these visions and mm -hmm. it's like obviously like the author could be seeing it completely different but i'm interpreting it this way and so like you know just now i had to pick um 
uh, a project that I want to work on for my thesis um, in order to graduate. And so I was like, sitting there like not knowing what to do. I'm like, oh, my God, this is stressing me out so bad. Um, and so I started to read. And I was just like, well, I can do something for that helps like my back, like culturally, like, you know. And so like I kind of came up with like ideas for that through the fact that I write, like read these books. And so it kind of like, you know, it's like your imagination. But at the same time, it's like coming up. It's like inspiration from somebody else. It's a movie playing in your head that now you're translating into like something else you're creating. Yes. You know? Yeah. That's very validating for me to hear because yes, <laughs> I have hoped to get more ideas from yeah. there. And I don't know if any, many of my ideas have. Uh, that's a lie. The mm -hmm. one that has made it in uh, is I did a music video for Low, a band mm -hmm. called Low. They're from Springfield, yeah. Massachusetts, whatever. Yeah. Um, and the video they wanted was like something with related to the ocean and like uh, the song was called La Pelle du Vide, which is the call of the mm -hmm. void, which is like a, uh, it's like a psychology term for like when you stand on the edge of a building mm -hmm. and like you want to jump, but like, you know, you shouldn't jump because mm -hmm. you're going to die, but that, right. <laughs> the call to the void there. Yeah. Uh, and so at the time I was reading a book about this like uh, battleship mm -hmm. that got sunk and all the sailors got like eaten by sharks. And it was like this like war story of like heroism and it's this crazy, yeah. whatever, crazy story. Um, but that book was like, as they sent me, I was like, oh, I've been thinking a lot about sharks in the ocean and boats and like, this yeah. sounds perfect. Yeah. Um, and so there are sharks in that video. They I did end up kind of like modifying yeah. that. Uh, but other than that, I don't think there's too many other times where the books have come out creatively, but I'm, I'm still reading. I'm still building that ammo as you bank. Should. Keep going. <laughs> 10 more minutes at a time. Yes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's it takes me shockingly long to get through a book, which is the other nightmare of it, where I've been on one book for like literally six months now. <laughs> but it's just <laughs> well, I mean, listen, we're all at different away. paces, you know, like for me. Oh, dude, I, 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 I've read like three books in a day. Like it's like to that point. Yeah. Unbelievable to me. I would get to 12 <laughs> minutes of my time and my body would be screaming <laughs> to move on with my life. I get that though. Like right now. I'm on, I've been on the same book for like two months. So like it kind of, it goes through phases. I feel like your two months is like a 900 page book though. Mine's like a 200 page book. That's very yeah, reasonable. It's, it's like this big. It's, it's pretty big. There you go. Yeah. I don't even pick those books up. I know I don't have the willpower <laughs> to them. Like I, I very intentionally set myself like a two, 300 page limit, like tops. Because I need, like, I need to feel progress as I go through it. I know, it yeah. And oh, no. Like, 900-page books, it's like, I'm going, I'm going, I'm like, <laughs> oh, my God, I'm never getting through this. <laughs> yes, literally. Yeah, yeah. my uh, dad asked to borrow a book, and I was like, Dad, please get that back, because, like, these are still, like, important trophies to me <laughs> of, like, things that I did. Like, I yeah. managed to finish this and sit through yeah, it. Yeah, like, no, it's a good thing, though, that you're doing it, because uh, it'll manifest itself, you know? It fucking better, because it yeah. stinks <laughs> most days. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'm towards the end of a book now, and I can't wait for it to be over. Oh, my God. It's been a great adventure, but I am... Uh, You're ready to move on. Yes, it's uh, <laughs> about the Native Americans and like mm -hmm. their last stand as colonialism comes to conquer them. So this is the like, end of the book where like they're fully getting conquered and wiped oh, out. Man. So it's just it's been a hundred <laughs> pages of just like doom and gloom of like, fuck, I kind of know how this goes and it's interesting to see all these but you pieces just, you tie want up. It to but be like, just done. yeah, I'm ready to move on from that. Native Americans <laughs> dying. That's not the most exciting thing to read wow. about every day. It's an interesting pick. Yes, uh, I'm very like historical. Uh, so it's okay, it is an sense. interesting yeah. thing of like the. Uh, the Comanches for they're like the yeah. last Native American tribe that like yeah. put up a resistance whatever okay. so it's an interesting kind of like yeah hero's tale but of yeah. course yeah their story doesn't end the most brilliantly All right. um, yeah. hell yeah um, anything else that I want to touch on today um, I was going to touch on video stuff but you brought that up earlier um, <laughs> any kind of dream shoot favorite shoot uh, so yeah I'd like to end on a fun one here uh, any kind of place is there kind of touch on some of the places you'd like to go mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's like Rock Am Ring, those like huge outdoor German music festivals mm -hmm. where it's like a full arena with like, I don't know, corn or who, I don't even like corn. I don't know why that name came out of my mouth, but <laughs> with corn playing and like just the whole arena playing. Yeah. Uh, is there like a mecca, is there a venue you want to shoot? Is there a band you have to shoot? Is there a place you want to go shoot? Uh, what stands out as like a, a dream shoot if money wasn't an issue and tomorrow if someone can hand you money wasn't an issue. If someone hands you a golden <laughs> ticket tomorrow and says, this takes you to Belgium to see Bring Me the Horizon if you <laughs> wanted to. Uh, yeah, where are you going, who are you seeing, what is, uh, what's on your to-do list? You know, I, I, it's funny that you say corn because I actually really like corn. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I don't think I know a single corn song. I don't know why that name came out. But. Corn would be a, a good one. I've actually, I've been talking about this like to people recently, how I really want to see corn. That's like so be funny. <laughs> Before they like, you know, stop, sure. you know. And so I think, yeah, that would be a big one. I mean, I don't know. I want to shoot definitely outside of the country. Like there's this venue, um, Lorna Shore actually played there, I believe. And it's like. It's literally like water around the venue. I don't know if you saw that. It's I feel like, like it kind of I don't know about, where it yeah. was, but it's like this like well-known venue and okay. it has like these like I don't know, it just looks amazing. Like I it looks like an Europe architectural somewhere? like yeah. It's in Europe. I I don't know where, but 
It looked incredible. And I was just like, wow, like immediately fascinated. I'm like, I want to go there one day. That's even cool. like, I don't even care if I don't shoot. I just want to see that. Like, that's crazy. Yep. You know, I mean, yeah, Deftones would be another one. I really like Deftones. That's I mean, they've been around, but it's just like, just haven't gotten to access, it. Yeah. yeah, haven't gotten to it. What are like it, red so. rocks? Like, I guess it's not architecture. It's natural architecture, I guess. Is that a I guess is natural a, architecture even a term? Am I making that up? No, <laughs> no, it's like, like, a, it's okay. like naturally there. No, yeah. no. Yeah, I mean, that place looks cool, too. That sounds, yeah. sounds like sounds it'd be cool. up your alley to see yeah, what God yeah. created. No, yeah, I've seen so many photos of it, and it's just, yeah, it looks really cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, hell yeah. That feels like a great <laughs> place to wrap up here. Um, ooh. I lied. One last thing I like to ask about uh, <laughs> hobbies outside of music. So with everyone, I'm so bad at having fun. This mm-hmm. is what I do for fun. Like part of why this podcast started is because I need to hang out with people and yeah. see people more. Yeah. And I won't go to the bar. I'll find every reason to stay in and keep working and keep it's building the things yeah. that we're talking about. <laughs> yes. So this is my attempt to like be social and mm-hmm. have fun. What are you doing outside of work, outside of, yeah, outside of the school work, the architecture stuff, outside of the photo? What is a hobby? What's something else that you do for fun that makes you happy? So right now I'm learning how to ice skate. <laughs> Hell yes. Okay. <laughs> it's like so random. Yes. Um, like a month ago, I got it stuck in my head. I'm like, you need to learn how to ice skate. Okay. And so I've been like going and I've just been doing that. I'm like, you know, six months from now, I'm going to be a figure skater. So that's just like engraved figure in skater. there now. Is that the one? We'll see. We're going to see some tricks. <laughs> we'll see. Some spins. <laughs> but um, no, yeah. That, Do you have a rink near you? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Like literally like right up the street. And gotcha. so that I think that's what did it to me too. It's okay. like, well, I have access to it. It's right there. That's funny. Um, I've been doing that. Um, I've been really, in, obviously, the reading, really into reading. Um, Ice skating is so, like... Not, so random. It is, but, like, it's not, <laughs> I guess, what's right there. And, yeah, if you're in it's New like York... It's, like, something I should have learned 10 years ago, but, you know, sure. I didn't. Because Lucas, <laughs> Lucas wasn't, like, a hockey player or something, right? No, he looks like he could have been, but I don't He knows how to rollerblade. And so (laughs) the last time we fucking went to ice skate, first time he ever went ice skating and he could do it. And I'm like sitting there, like staring at him, like, are you joking? (laughs) Like, are you taking lessons? Are you just going there? No, I'm just winging it. (laughs) And YouTube tutorialing it? No, no, not even that. I'm just, I'm just winging it. And then, uh, you know, whenever I can finally balance, I guess we'll see where that goes. (laughs) Okay. I like that. So I've been doing that, and um, I've been getting into, like, ceramics. I, I, I really want to, like, get into, like, pottery making yep. and stuff. Getting it. It's, like, kind of random things, uh, but, you uh, know. My ice skate equivalent has been golf. This last summer, I got yeah. so into golf, and, like, it's... That's an interesting one. Yeah, not really up my alley, <laughs> but it's, like, yeah, let me be terrible. It sounds like you kind yeah. of enjoy being bad at ice skating. It's been, like, freeing to go there and, Exactly, because like, be it's, kid. like, something I'm bad at, but, like, I want to be good at. So yep. it's, like, you know, because, like, everybody I know ice skates. And I'll go to the ice skating rink and I'll see like this four year old just fly by me and I'm like, are you joking? It's like, such a four year old, yeah. Yeah, I'm just yeah. like, oh my god, I need to be him, <laughs> like, you yep. know. So it's like it's that type of, and I'm having fun with it. I mean, it's fine. It's like something to do to like just kind of get your mind off, like yeah. the you know, the the getting stuck and like you have to do stuff like all That's the time. Been you know? the key for me with golf and with drums as well. Exactly. Like, yeah. Uh, I work so hard on everything else being perfect and nothing we do is perfect, right? But like I assume in the context of architecture, like most of your time goes into designing a building and you're not designing like the bulk of it. You're designing like, oh, I have this one window and I don't know where to put it. What if it goes here? What if it goes here? Yeah, it's like those little things that like really get to you. Yes. And those are the ones that I spend all my days on of like, where the fuck, where is this? What is this? Uh, And so, yeah, having these big things where it's like, I'm bad and I have no interest in being good. Like I'm (laughs) literally never going to join a band. (laughs) I'm never going to show off my golf skills. Like I'm going to be bad at this for the rest of my life. Hopefully, if all goes well, I'll yeah. never take it seriously. It'll just be yeah. something I fuck around with, and that's been a really like freeing outlet for me. Bowling is another one. I I'm really bad bowling. at bowling. Okay, like really bad. Is that it's, like actually kind of ridiculous list as well? I mean, I do it just because, but it's like <laughs> I know that's not that's one thing I'm not gonna get good at. It's yeah. like that one thing that I'll just be bad at forever, but it's fine. I'm like it's, just like, fun. becoming okay with that. I think for <laughs> from like 18 to like now, yeah, it's been like. I'm not going to do it if I'm not good at it. I'm going to invest all my time into the things yeah. I'm good at. I'm going to keep getting better at those things. Yeah. And recently it's been like, I can't try that hard all the time. Like at some point I have to take a deep breath and like yeah. be bad. Exactly. And, yeah, I, and I'm enjoying it. I kind of yes. actually really enjoy being bad at what I'm doing right now. <laughs> Which is so but, strange. It's the kind yeah, of things we work exactly. hard at. Exactly. Because like I, t- I try so hard to be a perfectionist and, pe- and to like be good at things. And yep. then I'm like doing this. I'm like, Yep. It's fun. <laughs> or cropping the photo, trying to get rid of the, what's the speaker? Uh, yeah. Not speaker, the mic like, stand. Whatever, yeah. Yes, yeah. getting rid of all it's those like, dumb you know, things. Now I'm just having fun doing like stupid things and just like having fun just failing. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. I appreciate that energy. I appreciate <laughs> that sentiment. And that rings true for me as well. Yeah. Uh, mission accomplished. Episode 55, Asante Dor. Dower. Dower. <laughs> Fuck. I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn one day. Um, Today's not that day, though, apparently. (laughs) Um, Anything you want people to know before we get out of here? So, yeah, social media, where do they find you? Where do they book a shoot? What are people contacting you for? Uh, Just message me, you know, 
runs, can do runs currently. Tours, not so much right now. Maybe at some point. Yes, but, you after know. school. <laughs> after May, I'm all set. <laughs> Hell yeah. So for the moment, you know. any kind of short-term stuff, uh, Instagram short DMs stuff, is the best yeah. way to contact you? Yeah, first name, last name on everything. Hell yeah. That'll be all in the description. I'll be linked. Um, Hell yeah. Go tell Shanti. She did awesome. Uh, tell me that I'm cool too because it makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Episode 55 of the book. Something for everyone. Thank you for coming through.